Hello everyone and welcome back to Beta Mails, the show where we play a bunch of beta games and let you know if they're worth checking out. If you guys would, would stop dicking around. <laughs> this time we played Hypercharged Unboxed, which actually isn't a beta. Um, we're probably not always going to play beta games. Uh, just I could not pass up that wordplay for the title of this, this little series. But it, there is a free demo on Steam, so you can download this and play it for free if you want to just dip your toes in it and try it out. Which, this is, a, I mean... In modern gaming is a beta anyway, right? Like, yeah, yeah, no, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know. It's, it's a really fun game. It's um either first or third person tower defense slash wave survival uh, type of game. That's um it's not PvP, but it um it is a lot of fun anyway. And um, Jelly, you're looking at me all weird, and it's throwing me off. You guys are throwing me off today. <laughs> we're going to we're going to talk about hypercharge on box. We're talk about if it's worth downloading and playing, if it's actually worth buying, um, the pros, cons, and uh, if we think this game will last for uh, for a good long while. So, uh, without further ado, my name is the Man Goose. Joining me as always is the Viking Jedi and uh, Jelly Knees, who is definitely one hundred percent not a part of this. Sorry, Jelly Simps, but he is not a part of this program. He just <laughs> happens to be here every time. It's Jelly Knees. So uh, let's get started with the question of the day. Is this worth game worth trying out? Let's say, let's let's make a two-part. Is it worth just playing the demo, which I think mm -hmm. we'll all just agree to that, and is it worth buying after you play that demo? So uh, Viking Jedi, get us started out. Yeah, um, I mean, I, yeah, I agree. The demo, for sure, it's it's definitely worth downloading. It's a, It's free. Um, you know, the only thing is the time that it takes to download and your bandwidth. If you have to pay for that, then uh, maybe it's <laughs> not for you. Watch a few videos like this one, you know, and see if it's for you. Um, no, I, I think that uh, the demo 100%. Um, and I'm going to say like, uh, like a 75% uh, that you should buy the game. But um, we'll, we'll go into some of that stuff later on. But I, I think the overall game is worth playing um but there are some frustrating aspects to the game that i think might turn some people off um all three of us bought the game so um and i think we had fun overall but we'll we'll see as we dive into the the deeper weeds of it all but yeah overall pretty good johnny's yeah i would say definitely play the demo right that's i mean it's for lack of a better put it a free trial right you can try before you buy as for the full game itself I think for me, it comes down to if you have friends that are all going to buy it with you, I think the game is way more enjoyable. And mm -hmm. even not even from a gameplay gameplay perspective necessarily, but just like being in a garage, right? The the two, the trial or the demo level is inside a garage and you're like running around underneath a car, right? And be having friends to like experience that with and be like, dude, there's a thing over here. Like what <laughs> is, is kind of a cool experience by itself. Yeah. play the game and i think makes the game more enjoyable as well so yeah if, if you have friends that are willing to buy it as well i think that's for sure and you like these tower defense wave survival type games i think for sure it's worth a buy yeah um, demo definitely try it out for yourself it's free um and and jelly kind of took the words right out of my mouth if you have friends to, that are also interested in this 100 percent buy it and have a blast um mm -hmm. if you're just going in solo. You might not have nearly as as much fun, and uh, that it's not PvP. I mean, yeah, it's not PvP, but you can still kind of compete with your friends so you can get the highest score, the most headshots, all that, all that crap. So it's kind of fun in that aspect. But there is there is no PvP environment, which I think a lot of our uh, audience is more attracted to the PvP style games. But this one is definitely worth. I mean, it's on it's on uh, Steam and Switch. And it's by a, a group called Digital Cyber Cherries. I don't know if I said that yet. Just a group of friends that were like, you know, fuck all this pay to win DLC microtransaction nonsense. Let's just make a game that people could buy and play. And that's exactly that's exactly what they did. There's, I mean, there's there's no microtransactions whatsoever. You just unlock everything through playing the game, which is, I think is really cool. So if if you want to support that kind of business plan, um, I would say just pick up the game and uh and have fun but again if definitely way more fun if you have friends to play with so let's, I mean, let's and 
there is also with the talk about the friends because I completely agree. There is um, a matchmaking, so you can get matched into. Like we actually on accident had a, a random person join into our thing. Um, so if you're like a little bit more outgoing and you don't mind matching with other people and playing with them, because you don't have to play the game by yourself, you can still play with other people who are queuing into to matchmaking and stuff like that and get teamed up with randoms and you know and that might be fun into itself because you could use the VoIP or whatever and make friends that way and and play it um I will caution people the demo is locked to first person so uh, my wife tried it because I thought this might be a fun game for her she didn't like it because it made her feel a little sick being in first person versus being able to zoom out and play it in third person um so that's just a small cautionary tale for you that uh you will be locked into first person during the demo um but uh, outside of that, the demo basically shows you everything you can do in the game. That'd be kind of the unofficial fourth <laughs> for uh, the beta males. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, it's true. Yeah, so let's let's talk about what we enjoyed about the game. And I've already kind of hit on a few of these points, but uh, Jelly Knees, mm-hmm. what what did you like about Hypercharge Unboxed? So what initially was almost a dislike for me, I think turned into a like, is the difficulty scaling of the levels. Um, initially, and we were playing on normal difficulty, so it wasn't the easiest, but it wasn't the hardest for our entire playthrough. And initially, the levels were kind of like, like, that was fun, but it wasn't hard. Like, it was just kind of like, yeah, you know, they, they, it was a wave shooter, no problem. Um, but then, like, the really, the last two or three levels... The difficulty like scaled hard. <laughs> yeah, it did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. It so did. then it then you're sitting there going like, oh, like okay, no, now I really gotta like focus in, put the right towers, the right positions, the right places, the find batteries, do all the things, right? So initially, I was upset about how easy it was. Granted, on the normal difficulty, but then when it ramped up, it was like, oh, okay, okay, like I could. <laughs> this is like I could see myself going back to those levels and grinding them out to get a perfect score. Because they were way more difficult and, and almost, I would say, more fun in that difficulty. But I, I'm a Dark Souls gamer, so I'm, difficulty is my bread and butter. <laughs> I mean, we should say that the, we were playing, it was meant for four people. And we were only allowing three because we just wanted to play with the three of us. So And it does, right. that it does ramp automatically up the difficulty give you a lot to fill out the other slots. Oh, so that's if true. You, mm-hmm. uh, if you're playing just <clears throat> you and one friend, it will give you two bots to fill out those slots. But because I'm a Dark Souls gamer, I turned off the bots and said, <laughs> it, the three of us can do this. And <laughs> went from there. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, too, with the bots, like, they're they're not, like, great, but they're not bad either. Like, mm-hmm. they play. They do spend their money. They they will use uh, their stuff to fill out the – because, I mean, the, the towers are a, a, a crucial part. But I would say – and maybe you guys can agree or disagree. I would say it's way more about you and your shooting and you're that – like, it's not like a normal tower defense in the sense that, like – you want to build like this impenetrable defensive base that does all the work and you just stand there and watch your minions kill things mm-hmm. like you you have to be very very proactive and i would say the bots were still proactive in that regard like they were out there doing stuff the one that we had on accident like i thought it it fit the the niche well as far as being a, a bot and getting stuff done so if you're still like a solo player and don't really want to you can play with the bots and they will help you win they're not going to just be a a nuisance, mm-hmm. <laughs> in my opinion. And there was a <clears throat> there was a huge variety of enemies. Um, like you start off like small, and then it just keeps ramping up and ramping up and ramping up. And it's not like the first enemies go away and you're fighting new enemies. No, they just add more shit to <laughs> to it, <laughs> which I think is probably one of the bigger draws for this. And I'll let Jedi really speak to this. It was the nostalgia factor because he, oh. that's something he just kept saying over and over again. It's all toys that you're fighting against. Like, and you're an actual action figure and you can like interchange your skins and like, oh, it's, it's, it's so freaking like, like when you go to a shop, it's like an empty box with like the little guns are wrapped in like the little plastic things that you need to cut to get them off. And yeah, I, this game is unrealistic. So cool. This game is unrealistic because I didn't have to spend 45 minutes trying to find scissors to cut those little tabs off of the <laughs> yeah. back of the box so I could use the extra guns. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, Jedi, I'll let you speak to that because that was like your that was your jam, man. 
Oh, dude. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it hit the nostalgia factor for me 100%. Like, I mean, it, the, the enemies were like anywhere from ninjas to army men to Beyblades to, I mean, they all had their own names, but, uh, or maybe, actually, I don't even know if they actually named the, the enemies uh, now that I think about it, but it's just wild. Like, you, you definitely get, like, for me, a, a nostalgic feeling of like sitting down, playing with my toys back in the day and like having these full on battles of, you know, epic proportions. But it was using my imagination. And like this game takes that and like fully immerses you into being your favorite G.I. Joe toy or whatever it was back then. And now you're living that experience of setting up a base and defending against these hordes of enemies and, you know, and the weapons are silly and fun and uh I, I don't know man just like i think when like the first level really set the tone like when you're running around and you're just like finding these like these really niche spots and you're like dude there's this over here and then there's like the, and they put little easter eggs hidden around there like we found one where there's like this castle and inside the castle are these guys like praying and there's a battery <laughs> in the middle that you need for to, to and it's like and they're singing a very like choir type song i don't know it sounded really funny but like we, the whole time at least for me i just felt like i was constantly like like being rewarded for the nostalgic Im Im uh, impact of the game like they just really i don't know man they just took a, they took their time and really made you feel like you were a kid or, or that some kid had set up this whole thing and now you're playing in it um and it was i don't know it was great but um to mingus's point too the the enemies themselves, the variety of enemies and how much like you start with like relatively small amount and then you it ramp up to some crazies. I don't want to give too much away, but you ramp up to some really crazy, almost overbearing type enemies that feels really fun uh, and engaging. I think um, I think you kind of really hit on what makes this game great is that you can tell that the developers of this game loved making this game. Like, yeah, you, you could just tell. It's like um, uh, that the movie I watched recently, Everything Everywhere All at Once. You could tell everybody had fun making that movie, and the movie came out fucking fantastic. If you guys haven't seen that movie, go see that movie. But uh, <laughs> I haven't seen it. Uh, this game is like that. You could tell that these guys had fun making this game, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it really it really shines through in the product. Yeah, one hundred percent. And the customization is also hilarious and great. And you, we would exit the game to go and customize because mm -hmm. we had on like as you play the game you unlock more characters and more uh you know weapons skins and all that stuff and it's all just in the game and um i know and this is speaking a lot to what jelly was talking about but one of my favorite things was the there you have like a hundred percent system like that you have in like a lot of other games where it's like oh you died once and so because you died you don't get to platinum this one it's only going to be gold and you're like whoa we got to go back and yeah. <laughs> beat it to not be gold. We need platinum. And when you hit platinum, you get like an unlock for it. So you're rewarded for your skill and your playthroughs. And um, that to me speaks to being able to have multiple runs on various difficulties with a bunch of different friends. And I, I, I think that was, that was a huge thumbs up for me. Mm -hmm. uh, just the in-between too, like it wasn't just all this fighting in between waves. You had to mm -hmm. run around and collect coins and collect different packages of stuff. You go to shops. And there was all this like it was like a whole different experience just running around trying to find secrets. That, that that's another thing for replayability. That secrets hidden around the maps. Um, so if you didn't find all of them, you wanted to go back and find those. And then that's where the tower defense part came in. You could start building. You could use that money that you that you found to build defenses around the various towers. It could be one to four towers on each map. And um, batteries was a big thing. You had to find batteries to power up the towers. Because if you put like like a turret next to your tower, it wasn't going to fire if that if your tower didn't have enough battery power. So, ah, man, that was uh, that was really cool. Like another interesting facet to the game that added a little bit of depth. And then just yeah, I think my my favorite part of that was just the crazy variety of enemies and just. Mm -hmm. They they really come at you. <laughs> like, it's like there's these robots coming around this side. You got this got this huge map that you got to run around. That's always you know like a dining room or a garage or or the out the, the backyard or something. And they're just coming from fucking everywhere. And then there's tops spinning in at you. And then the zombies, which aren't that hard, but if but like they start 
you shoot them down and their legs go away and they start crawling at you. <laughs> Goddamn, my Bounty little balls. ponies flying around <laughs> stealing your batteries and <laughs> paratroopers. <laughs> oh my god, it got pretty yeah. insane. It mm-hmm. was great. Yeah, uh, Joe, do you have anything else you uh, you want to talk about as far as what you liked about the game? I mean, I think you guys hit on all the things, right? Like, it's a really fun thing. They also implemented, like, certain levels had boss battles that, like, a bigger mm-hmm. giant mob would come out. And they all had, like, unique things about them that you had to work around to beat the boss. I think that's another cool thing, right, of, of implementing that. Um, so all around, the, the TLC was definitely put into this game for everything that they wanted it to be. And and I think that's great, and it shows the work that they put into it for sure. Uh, how about things that we disliked about the game? Because I actually, there's not much that I did not like about Hypercharge, other than that it wasn't PvP, and that's kind of my jam. If I'm playing like a third or first person game, usually for first person I stick to the 2D platformers, but uh, I don't know. I mean, so the only one that I can immediately think of, and it's such a like small thing. Is that for us, so they implemented a naming system that basically made everyone anonymous. So if you're playing online, you don't have to worry about like what this person's Steam name is for any reason. It just makes them, yeah, Miss Teapot Explosion, whatever it is, right? <laughs> like, and that's yeah. that's fine from like a moderating online play perspective. Totally sure. understand that. No big deal. Fall Guys did that. That was fine. But when it's just the three of us and we've intentionally grouped up together... Then we're sitting there going like, uh, Miss Teapot Explosion, I don't know which one of us you are. Like, there's a health thing you need, right? Like, it may, it it was also, like, one of the entertaining things about it at the same time, right? Because that's the only call out you had, Miss Teapot Explosion, right? That there's health or whatever it was. But at the same time, there was a little, like, a bit of frustration of, like, I don't know who this is in front of me. <laughs> right, right. Trying to figure it all out. I, I would agree with that one. I, I that was uh, it did make for some hilarious callouts, but I think it was <laughs> just as much the other part where it was frustrating because you couldn't figure out who it was that you needed to do something or whatever. Um, I think my big complaint was the um, sometimes the enemies were almost like really difficult to see, um, especially like the um, spinning tops and or the Beyblades, whatever you want to call them, the bouncy balls. Like, some of those were really, really difficult um, to to be able to spot. And so, like, your base or wherever might start getting attacked just because you couldn't see it uh, without, like, you know. And, and so that, from or at least for me, I don't know if you guys had that problem, but it was sometimes difficult to catch an outline of, of what it was that was, you know, attacking or being somewhere. Like, I, w- I remember on one, I died because I just was surrounded and I didn't even notice by a bunch of things underneath me, basically. So the Beyblades were hitting me, and I couldn't even see them because I'm in first person, and I'm up here, not looking down at my feet right. that are being hit. And I just was like, oh, I guess I'm dead now because <laughs> like six Beyblades had stacked on top of me, and I didn't notice. Um, so, like, that that part. Uh, I also wish, and this is maybe, again, not what they really wanted, but I kind of wish that there was a little bit more um, intelligence with the the base that you're building um like the towers are kind of dumb um you know they don't really, they work not on a 360 you have to point them in a specific direction i didn't realize that until like halfway through the maps that we had played so i think some of mine were pointing in a bad direction so they weren't doing anything their damage is kind of meh um so sometimes it just felt like you were ma- managing to put up a base because if you didn't have anything there then if things snuck by you your your tower or whatever it was would start taking damage and then you don't you can't platinum the game or platinum the map. So I, I kinda wish that some of those things were a little bit more similar to a lot of other games that are have the tower defense where they feel a little bit more intelligent and they feel like they're going to be more beneficial. Sometimes I just felt like they really weren't. Like they just kinda just like were yeah. okay. You know what I mean? Like I don't know if that you guys felt the same way, but they didn't always feel engaging or or and they're expensive too. Like the Money in the game is also kind of hard to manage. Um, and again, that might be intentional. Again, they want you to focus more on killing it yourself rather than relying on the towers. But I feel like there's still some room for improvement in that regard. I think there could have been more levels, too. I would, we capped out, and I was like, wait, what? That was the end? That was all? Like, there's yeah. plenty of re- replayability in the game, but I expected there to be more to it than that. I think there's 12 levels total. Yeah. 
which is, I guess, pretty good. And I think that they plan to add more stuff, and it's not going to be, it's not going to come out of your wallet to to, to mm-hmm. download and play it again. But yeah, I'm, I think that kind of wraps the, up the cons. We're we're sort of reaching for the cons right now. Yeah, I mean, and the game was what for? It was fifteen dollars, I think, maybe I around there. I Think so. Yeah, it might be cheaper now because it's Steam Summer Sale. Oh, that's true too. Yeah, I, I don't think it was that expensive. And I think again, considering it's a r- very small dev team working on this like the amount of levels that they have are i guess would leave some room for desire for sure but like they're incredible the levels themselves though, yeah. were really well designed like i think that they were fun and um i know for me and jelly like we were like the collection guys so not finding all the collectors on like every map was <laughs> i know it was driving him nuts because it was driving me nuts and he's way worse about it than i am so like there's there's definitely some opportunities for finding and exploring and there's so much stuff that you probably we didn't even know that is was sitting right in front of us that we somehow missed and um so from like that perspective I'm really excited to to play it some more but yeah it would have been cool if there was more levels but that's just because we liked playing it so much I, and I think that was really what it came down to is we're greedy for more um but yeah. I don't really have that much to complain about. It was the, other than again, like I said, some. Oh, and some of the weapons weren't that great. Um, what was the one that you guys the really hated? Part. The the ice one. Yeah, you, oh, yeah, you that feel was like there's some. Yeah, that some of them just didn't really. Like the shotgun sucked. Um, yeah, basically the only ones that were good were like the auto rifles or the minigun. The minigun was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, that's all. That's yeah, I guess as far as negatives. Well, let's talk about if we think this game is going to last, if we think that it's going to be big enough to where you could just queue in and find a match if, you, if you're if you queuing in alone in, like, two years from now. Um, Jelly Knees, what do you think? I think there's definitely the potential for it. I mean, it's releasing on more platforms as time goes on. So right now, it's only available on PC and Switch, but I know they have an Xbox release very soon. It, it just got announced, like, a couple days ago. Um, so Xbox, and then I assume they'll go to the PlayStation, then they're after. And if there's crossplay enabled, you could probably find people to online for a while in the future. Because mm-hmm. this is the kind of game that you can turn on. I mean, uh, back in the day, Dungeon Defenders was another one very similar mm-hmm. to this. And that you are playing and you have tower defense at the same time. And it's a good just like chill and zone out end of the work day. You just come home and yeah, you shoot some toys, right? Like that's right. I, I mean, I was telling people, oh, some of my friends I'd be like, oh, I'm going home and I'm playing Toy Story the game, right? Like I'm gonna, like, <laughs> right, like that kind of feeling. And so it's, I, I think that, that there's definitely some staying power with that in terms of like a very casual sense of just like go home, veg out on the couch, and just shoot some toys. Yeah, uh, I I agree. I think this is like, it's like one of those niche, kind, not niche niche, but like kind of like a phasmophobia type game where it's it, as long as because the devs are active and in, in participating and there's enough money going into the game from players finding it that I think that they'll be able to keep it around um, and operating. So because um, the game is fun, like if if we find out, right, we've already beaten it. And we, if we don't, you know, as time goes on, we kind of go back 100 percent, maybe a couple levels. And then like, you know, like it's definitely one of those games where I feel like you could be either on a stream or getting drunk with your friends and on a, on a Friday night, not sure what you want to play or you're in like a gaming lull or whatever. This kind of game would really like no none of you guys would have to convince me to be like hey let's just play some random games of hypercharge i'd be like okay yeah let's do it and if they come out with like a new map like oh hey we just added three new maps and all of us would probably be like oh dude hypercharge yep. it, you know I, I think that we would all jump on so i feel like it's going to yeah fall guys is a good representation of it like where it's kind of one of those games like me and wife actually we just started playing fall guys because it was on xbox and it's free to play now so we're just like mm-hmm. hey let's play for some fall guys they added a bunch of new maps that I hadn't played yet. It was super fun. I, am I going to play it every single day all the time? No, but it's definitely one of those games that's fun to pick up and, and play and laugh at and joke around with, especially if you've been drinking. Um, I think it it's it's a cool, nostalgic shooter. And I think, actually, there are plans to make a PvP mode. I think that I remember oh, really? them talking about that on TikTok because... Um, that's where I think this game kind of blew up because it's not new. It's been out for a little while, but somehow randomly TikTok found it, I think is, and then it just went kaboosh. It did like the, um, among us explosion where randomly it just got found. And now it's, 
And so, yeah, they're, they're taking all the money that everybody's been throwing into it and, and definitely reinvesting into making the game even better than it already is. So um, I think it has staying power. I know the Mangus asked us the two years thing. I think this one actually has a two years aspect. Again, falling into like the Fall Guys, Phasmophobia game you kind of go back to whenever something new comes out or if you're bored and just feel like playing a fun game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, one thing you kind of touched on, Jedi, I'm pretty sure I was drunk every time we played this. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good time. Oh, it showed. Um, yeah, no, it's yeah, fine. <laughs> yeah, I definitely was the worst one at this, as I am at all no. the games. But, um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I will say, I, I, I kind of, I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb here and, uh, really put, kind of stick my neck out there. I definitely think this was going to be around in two years, um, out of all the games that we played. Um, especially if it's getting released on more consoles. Like, if it was just on Switch, I think this would be around in a couple of years. Like, people are going to find out about this game, get into it, play it. I, I guarantee we're going to see, sp- like, uh, hypercharged speed runs in the future and, and, oh, and that's stuff true. like that. Yeah. Like, um, this is just one of those games that I think is going to, is going to, resonate with people because it does have that nostalgic feeling of playing with army guys and stuff and it's just a well-designed fun game that they put a lot of love into and i think for those reasons this was going to be around in two years so um yeah give that demo a try and if you like it pick it up yeah and i think if they do come out with a pvp mode you could do like a free-to-play pvp mode and then have the full game be purchased still and Mm -hmm. it could still pull from on both ends for people I don't think they would do that though with their philosophies. That's true, probably not. But it's <laughs> you'd have to have some way to monetize that PvP mode, which would be more than likely microtransactions. No, you get the cosmetics. PvP mode, you get only the base skin. You look like the blue guy in Splitgate. <laughs> um, but <laughs> if you want cosmetics, you have to buy the full game, and then you just unlock them by playing the story mode. Yeah. So basically, I mean, Halo did that. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. That exact concept, actually. Yeah. I mean, an old Call of Duty. Like, I mean, just because, like, I feel like that's something that, that I think devs that are in the, the non-AAA space can bring back. Like, all of these games that we talk about, like, you know, oh, how are we going to monetize it? How are we going to... It's like, because they they feel like they, they, they have to have the staying power built into it through taking more money from their consumer. And, mm. and I just... I remember buying a Call of Duty game and the skins you got were the skins you by earned by playing the game over a long period of time. And that was what kept you coming back. But I think the the, run, the issue we're running into with these businesses that have turned into publicly traded companies, you know, is that they have to appease shareholders and, and grow profits and all that. So the only way they can do that is through monetizations that are aggressive. So you don't get skins just by playing their game anymore. You have to buy a battle pass or buy through premium currencies or whatever and and again i get that if it was just to maintain you know the game in a sense like you know games are expensive to make i'm not trying to like downplay that at all but i'm way more willing to help a small dev team that is trying to just keep the game moving forward and you know they're not necessarily appeasing to you know shareholders and trying to maximize profit margins that's fine with me. I, I I don't have a problem with that. It's when it starts to become predatory that I'll I'll get turned off by it. You know what I mean? Like I mean, it's that's just how I am. At that's least. the problem with the mobile gaming industry affecting. Well, that's true. The regular gaming industry, like mobile games, oh. put games into the hands of the masses, and let's face it, <laughs> most people are fucking stupid. <laughs> true so, um so i think I, I, that's that's a good good way to sign off this week <laughs> let's, let's close things out um jelly knees has a youtube and a twitch even though he doesn't really use either of many more jelly what about that marvelous mondays let's bring it back buddy i too <laughs> so uh you go ahead and subscribe and uh follow him on the twitch and youtube viking jedi will have his um twitter listed down below you can follow his twitter and see what the hell he's thinking about talking about and he'll post about probably this show too so probably yeah, yeah. actually one thing i just want to point out real quick before we fully sign off is there apparently is pvp already in the game up to eight people we just didn't play it 
So oh, really? that might be something worth exploring. Yeah, it says it's already there. So maybe it's either something that came out and since we've played. And yeah, we it must have it, come out since we played. Holy shit. Or whatever. Yeah, and they do have some DLC packages. I think those are just adding in more cosmetics. I don't think that there's anything as far as like more maps or anything in those. But I'll, I would have to double check. But um, either way. Yeah, right so eight, up to eight people. PvP is already in the game. So there you go. Cool beans. And it is on sale. $17. How much? Seventeen dollars okay. right now. So normally it's twenty. It's up. It's seventeen oh, right so now. Fifteen twenty four. Fifteen percent. Yeah, fifteen percent off. So there you go, guys. <laughs> so you can get the DLC, basically all the DLC for the price of the normal game right now with the summer sale, if you care. Uh, not sponsored, by the way. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, that's what I do want to sponsor us. Yeah. yeah. Hey, <laughs> <you know. laughs> hey. Digital cherries. Reach yeah. out to us. Yeah, let us All know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to wrap it up for this week, guys. Uh, if you're watching the premiere, I appreciate you coming out and watching um, watching this in the video. Then I appreciate that, too. If you guys have a beta game that you want us to play, um, hit us up in the comments. Let us know uh, what you want us to play. That's how we found out about Veiled Experts, I think Splitgate, a couple other ones. So, um, yeah, hit us up. And we'll, we'll definitely give them a try. But for now, this is the Beta Mail signing off. You guys have a good one. Mango. Special shout out to channel members I Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, Stunt, Raven, and Blastoise King. <laughs>